This is the Sony VPO XW 5000 ES native 4K projector with IMAX enhanced. We're going to open it up, check out what's inside, and then I'm going to put it in my hush box, get it connected to my equipment, and we're going to check out some of the settings, and then I'm going to give you my thoughts and impressions. Let's unbox. All right, first of all, big shout out to the Grid Hi-Fi who loaned this projector to me for review. If you wanna pick up this projector, the 5000 ES or any other other cool gear that they have, check out the Grid Hi-Fi. The Grid Hi-Fi is the largest showroom in Texas for home theater and home audio. At the Grid Hi-Fi, we cater to the discerning audiophile and electronic lifestyle. Subscribe to the Grid Hi-Fi YouTube channel for regular content and check out our Instagram page as well. But if you're in the Houston area, Come check out the Grid Hi-Fi in person, or you can check us out online 24-7 at www.gridhifi.com. And don't forget to let them know the Haterade Cowboy sent you. All right, so as I said, this is a native 4K projector. Unlike the Epson LS12000B that I have, it is a 4K E-Shift. This is native. So in the box, we get our remote really long remote i don't know why sony always has long remotes but there's a remote and then we get some sony batteries for the remote and then we get a limited warranty paper and probably a manual and this does not come double box but you've got some styrofoam on the sides to protect it in shipping And then inside we get our power cable for the projector and it looks like that's everything that's inside i am super excited to check out this projector all i've ever known in my theater has been e-shift so i'm excited to see what a 4K laser projector or native 4K projector looks like. Oh, that looks so beautiful. So there's the projector. Got a really nice matte, kind of almost a little bit textured feeling to it. All right, so on the front, we have our lens cover. And one thing that I'm kind of disappointed on this is that, you know, it's, there's no mechanical, electric, whatever you want to call it, lens cover or lens shift. So, you know, that kind of sucks, especially since, you know, the price point, but it is their entry level. So I think the 6,000 might have it, but on the front, you have your lens cover and it just comes off super easy. So then you have your, your lens, and then it looks like you got some vent covers on the front, on the left and right for heat dissipation. So this is the back of the 5,000 ES. So it looks like we got some more ventilation on the back and what's interesting about this is that the HDMI ports and stuff that I'm going to show you they're actually on the side instead of on the back so I don't know how I feel about that but I think it probably might be a little bit better that could because that means if you have this in a hush box or a shelf like I do you know you can push this thing a little bit further back you still want to leave some room obviously for the vents so that it can you know have proper ventilation but let's take a look at the side all right so on the side you have your power button and then you have your input and then you have a menu button, enter button, and then you have your lens. So this is manual. So that's the only thing that sucks. I really don't like having to do manual controls. But the good thing with that is, you know, with some of the, like the Epson that has everything's electronic, motorized. Sometimes even though you lock the settings, it does move. And I can confirm that it's happened to me numerous times. But I don't know if you can see the bottoms. Let me see if I can hold it up and show you where the where all the ports are all right so on the bottom we have our ethernet and then we have an hdmi m1 and hdmi 2 and we have a trigger infrared blaster in remote and then we have another usb and then our power access port is right here on the very bottom in the corner and then if we take a look at our remote we have some buttons, we have a light, input, power, and then you have film one, film two, so that's probably, you know, your different video settings that you can use to, you know, get the, the look that you want. 
and then you've got ref, I don't know if that stands for reference or not, TV, photo, game, and then you've got Cine, I believe, TV, some user profiles, and then you've got your aspect ratio, 3D, which is interesting. I don't, don't believe this projector supports 3D. I know the 6000, when you step up to the next one, it supports 3D, but I don't think this one supports 3D, but I'll check out, check that out and see what that is. And you've got color space, color temp, color correction, gamma correction, contrast enhancer, reality creation, and you've got some plus or minus controls for sharpness, brightness, and contrast. All right, well, let's get this set up in my hush box, get it connected to my equipment. Let's take a look at the settings, and then I'm gonna watch some content and maybe, you know, do some demos for you guys and give you my thoughts and impressions and make sure you stay tuned to the channel because I will be doing a full review. This is just going to be like a first look, but let's go ahead and get this set up. All right. So we are on my Nvidia shield. I have Aquaman up again and just trying to keep a, you know, some consistency with the previous video or with, you know, the Epson LS 12,000 B, but yeah, so already I can tell the Sony 5,000 ES has a much, sharper picture everything is more detailed there's more detail to begin with but everything is more detailed the sharpness is like on point and not like the grainy sharpness like the picture is sharp like sony sharp so you know one thing that is obviously apparent is the brightness is a lot more on the epson which the epson has you know 2700 lumens versus 2000 lumens now if you're if you're not watching it side by side you're probably not going to notice much of a difference just because I've been, you know, was using the Epson for a while before I hooked this up so I can tell, but you still get a, a very, very good bright image and the HDR tone mapping is really, really doing wonders. So I'm going to put, hit play here a little bit just so that you can see. And then... I'm going to, uh, let's pause it right about there. So everything looks more natural. Now before on the Epson LS 12,000B, I had mentioned that there was kind of like this softness on the image, which I, I actually like, I don't mind it. That's not here though on the, the LS 12,000B. And it's probably because it's a native 4K projector. But what I want to do is I want to go into the settings of the Sony projector so you can see, you know, all the options and stuff that you guys have access to. And I think it's more, I, I think this one's going to be a little bit harder to dial in, you know, the way that you want it just because there's so many more options and there's more features. But I mean, right out of the box, you can still get an amazing picture. So again, I'm not a professional calibrator. I'm not calibrating either one of these projectors, the Epson or the Sony. I'm just showing you out of the box the kind of picture that you'll you'll get. So if we go to the menu, we have picture, and then you have Cinefilm, which it's on right now. If we go down to Cinefilm 2, and you you might hear you might hear the fan noise kick up. When I first plugged it on, it was super, super loud. Like much, much, much louder than the Epson. And I was like, I can't deal with this. This is way too loud because the projector is right above my head. So if that happens, man, it's it's going to be an, an, an issue. But we'll talk about that later. So that's Cinefilm 2. And then you have Reference TV. So you, you, you get way more picture profiles on, on this thing. Photo. And then obviously you can go in and, you know, adjust the sliders and different things for each setting. Game. Bright Cinema. Bright TV. User. And then IMAX Enhanced. Now, from what I understand, when you have IMAX Enhanced content, IMAX Enhanced automatically gets activated, at least on 
receivers I know it automatically activates and it goes into the IMAX enhanced setting and you really can't change that setting like there may be a couple things that you can tweak but it's kind of a setting to where it gets activated once it recognizes the content IMAX enhanced content and then it basically takes over and it does all of its presettings for IMAX enhanced so back out of that go back into settings so then you have under picture, you have reset, you have reality creation. You can click on that. You can turn that off or on. You have cinema black. So this, as I understand, if you adjust this, so the, the reason why my the, the fans were so incredibly loud, Chris explained it to me, is that the higher that it is, it's basically, I guess it was basically maxed out before I got it when it was in the showroom. And like the fans were super loud and I texted him I was like hey man what's what's up with this and so he explained it to me so you can mess with that you've got laser light setting dynamic control full max and if you're coming from a Sony or Sony projector then a lot of these settings might you know be familiar to you a lot of these aren't familiar to me because I have a Sony TV it's pretty old but I do recognize some of these so then you have motion flow you know if you want the picture to to get better so you have smooth low smooth high and let me see if I can again you probably won't be able to tell because this is a YouTube video but let me hit play so you so yeah right now I can tell that that's activated that's pretty aggressive I don't know if I really like it that much I did see a judder right when it started but yeah, and I'm, I'm getting some, I'm seeing some like lagginess on some of the frames on that high setting, which on the Epson, I didn't see that at all on any of the settings. It was apparent that you could see that, you know, the motion interpolation was activated, but this one is, is pretty aggressive. So I'm going to pause that here and then go back into the settings for the projector. So that was motion flow, then you can adjust all these contrast, HDR, brightness, color, hue, color temp, sharpness, expert setting. You can you can turn on or off the noise reduction. If you've got smooth gradation, color correction, HDR, you can do auto, HDR10, HDR reference, HLG or off. And you've got color space and input lag. And then over here we have aspect. So you can do normal, you can stretch it if you need to, or squeeze, you know, if you're using an anamorphic lens. So we're going to go back to normal. Blanking, you've got on or off. And set up, you know menu position if you need to center this or if you need to do like a you know flip the image or anything like that high altitude mode not sure what that is and you've got network management web UI power saving and then dynamic range you can choose from auto limited or full on both HDMI 1 or 2 HDMI signal format enhance I'm not sure what this is I had it was on enhanced before and then I kind of changed it around to see what it would do so I'm not exactly sure what the difference is between standard and enhanced if you if you know then you know go ahead and let me know down in the comments but I went basically just kept it on enhanced format since you know I guess it's going to give you the highest uh, picture and for some reason the picture is not coming back now There we go. So that takes a really long time to come back. So I'm going to go back to enhanced. So that's one thing I've noticed about some of these settings when you change them. It takes a really long time for the image to come back. So it's probably not that big of a deal if you're not going to be changing that very often. But it does take a while. And the image hasn't even come back up on my NVIDIA Shield yet. So and then you have settings lock. And then we have 
image flip. Actually, this is the image flip, I believe, where you can flip it if you need to. You know, if you're hanging this, you're mounting this on, upside down on a, on a ceiling. Then you've got your anamorphic lens. You can change that from 1.24 to 1.32. You've got trigger, infrared, panel alignment, and network setting. And then you've got your, your information. So obviously, you know, I can't go over every single setting in the menus because it'll just, the, the video would be, would be just too long. But there were a couple of things I wanted to show you that you can change. So if you go into the picture, settings and then you go down to expert setting we'll click on that again you've got noise reduction smooth gradation color correction hdr so if we click on hdr i want you to focus on the clouds so if you switch from and I'm, I'm primarily focusing on hdr 10 and hdr reference so you actually get a lot of detail i keep this on auto and pro that's probably going to be the best setting but Take a look at the clouds and look at the amount of detail that you gain or lose depending on which one you're on. So right now we're on auto, but if I go to HDR10, you'll see it doesn't really change, right? But then if I go to HDR reference, look how much detail you get in the clouds. So HDR reference, HDR10, you lose quite a bit of uh, detail in the clouds there. So that's one area that you might want to look at if you if you have the Sony 5000 ES and maybe you're not you know happy with some of the detail that you're getting or maybe you think that there's not enough detail you might want to check from you know going from auto to HDR reference because you actually gain quite a bit of detail now I was actually very impressed when I was looking at this I was like wow I didn't realize there was that much detail just in the clouds and you know, if you're watching a movie, you're just probably not going to be focusing on the clouds. But this is just one specific frame that, you know, when I paused it, I just happened to pause it here and I went into the settings. And I started playing around with the settings. And I was like, oh, wow. So, you know, I need to watch some more content with this to see if HDR reference would be OK just leaving it, leaving it on that. Or, you know, how does it perform versus letting it do auto? And then another one I wanted to look at was color space. So you've got BT709, which is probably going to be the standard, but then you've got BT20. Now, when I have my Epson 5040, or, you know, when I was using my Epson 5040UB, there was something like this, the BT20, but it would just blow out everything. But if we look at this, so this is BT709. Look what happens at the colors when you go to BT20. So you get actually quite a bit more color enhancement on the 7 you know BT709 it's a little bit it's kind of flat basically. The BT2020 the color just just really pops and it really comes comes to life. So, you know, you you've got these other ones color space that you could probably go in here and edit custom. But I thought that that was interesting from, you know, the jump from BT7 to 9, which really looks flat to BT20. Now, obviously, you're not going to want to use BT20 for everything. You know, this is obviously a very HDR heavy movie, Aquaman. If you're watching SDR content, then you probably want to keep it on BT709. But again, that's just kind of one of the things that I wanted to show you in the settings that you can kind of go and change that I think is a little bit different from the Epson LS12000 that you might get a little bit more control over your your color and your your HDR. So yeah, I, I'd say that the the images on the Epson versus the the Sony is is pretty close, but the Sony definitely beats it out in sharpness, detail, you know, the reproduction of of, of HDR, and I think their HDR dynamic HDR whatever it's called is is going to be better on on the Sony um, I really I really like this image this image looks absolutely fantastic again you're not getting as much light but if you have a completely blacked out room like I do well at least in the in the half first in the front of my room is blacked out 
but if you have a if you have a completely blacked out room i don't think this is going to be an issue and then depending on the type of screen that you have the gain you know if you have a higher gain, gain screen then you know you're going to have more light being reflected i am going to be getting a new screen soon a stewart 100 inch and i believe is the gain is going to be 1.3 so i i was leaning towards the sony however i don't know if you can see it on here my hush box is i guess <laughs> the materials that i use it's flexing a little bit and so it's the sony is is crooked and i cannot i cannot get it to to balance out i've tried everything so i may i don't know what i'm going to do yet i may have to you know stick with the epson because i didn't really have that problem with the epson it was a little bit off but i'm pretty sure that i could have fixed it with the feet the sony it might be just too heavy for my hush box or may have to mount it but you know the the sony can i heard the fans on the highest setting and it can get super 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 loud to the point where i was like i don't i don't like this but if we're talking just about image quality the image quality is is absolutely fantastic you've got a more true image you know as opposed to the, the the softer look on on the epson ls 12000b again i really like the softness that it added you know it looks different but it's still very detailed that's not here on on the sony you're just going to get you know your sony standard straight awesome image true 4k native 4k as opposed to the e-shift on the epson so i'm i'm very impressed with this i think the epson really only beats out the the sony on light output and the 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 interpolation that it has but yeah beautiful image on on the sony 5000 es all right so pros and cons of the sony 5000 es the biggest pro i would say is the native 4k resolution with the native 4k 3840 by 2160 resolution paired with the x1 ultimate chip you're going to get an exceptional crisp sharp and detailed image that sony is known for next you've got some of the best hdr implementation on a projector that i've seen to date at least in my theater. And you can go into the settings and customize the HDR even further. Not to mention, throw in an HD Fury into the mix and you'll get an absolutely beautiful Dolby Vision image in native 4K. You've also got IMAX enhanced compatibility for an added boost in video quality when the content is available. Cons. The biggest con for me was the fan noise. I just couldn't do it. On its highest setting, it's two to three times louder than the Epson LS12000. Now granted, my hush box is right above my head and I have yet to put the front cover on it, but the LS12000 in the same situation on its highest setting was far less noticeable. And on the lowest fan setting, you almost don't even hear it. Also, the lumens output might be an issue for some at 2000 lumens versus the comparable 2700 on the LS12000. However, if you pair the 5000 ES with the higher gain screen, then you'll probably be fine. Also at this price point, I would have liked to have seen Sony incorporate HDMI 2.1 for future proof. Now, if you don't care about gaming at 4K 120, then you won't need HDMI 2.1. There's also no 3D support and the frame interpolation wasn't as good as the LS12000. All right, so that's my review of the Sony 5000 ES. Now, this is an absolutely incredible projector with a beautiful, beautiful image. Again, like I said, that Sony is known for. You will not be disappointed on the quality and the image on this. Sharpness, detail black levels the hdr implementation is is better on the sony however the gap is closing you know what epson has done with their ls 12000 b they're they're pretty close so you know if you're planning on buying the sony 5000 the only thing that i would say is if you're going to be putting this inside of your theater which you are make sure that it's either like way behind you or you have a really, really good hush box, hush box that's quiet because this thing gets super, super loud. And you know, when you first start watching content, it's pretty low, but I guess as the, as the projector heats up, the fans kick in and it's, it's just too much for me. Again, it's right above my head and you know, that's the best placement for my theater. However, I just don't think that that's going to work for me. Like as much as I love this projector, you know, 
I just can't deal with the fan noise. That's the whole reason why I built my hush box. Again, I still have some things to do with my hush box to, to improve it. I still need to put, you know, the front cover on it, which would help, but it's really, really loud. So other than that, great projector. Let me know what you guys think down in the comments. If you have the Sony 5000 ES or any of their other projectors from the ES line, or if you're going to plan on picking the 5000 up after watching this video, and you know, if you want to pick this up, then consider buying from the Grid Hi-Fi. I'll leave a link in the description, but it's www.gridhifi.com. And if you do purchase from the Grid Hi-Fi, let them know that Hater Ray Cowboy sent you. As always, no matter where you're at on your home theater journey, make sure you enjoy it. For Hater Ray Cowboy Cinema, I'm Hater Ray Cowboy, and I'll see you guys in the next video.